Hi, hello. Welcome back to the Educated Cone Snap Channel. How you doing? So, High Evolutionary is coming out in a couple days, and I want to kind of talk about the seven cards that will be changing with it and kind of discussing their individual merits, right? They're all not having the same type of effect. And I definitely think there will be decks that use specific versions of the cards and there will be cards that maybe won't be played after a couple of weeks so i just wanted to talk about all of them throughout and just discuss them on the individual merit we'll probably be having a separate video discussing high evolutionary itself and some of the deck ideas with that but here i just want to talk about those seven change cards they have discussed the potential of adding more cards with no abilities that do get affected by High Evolutionary, but for now, we have the seven, so let's begin. So if you don't know, High Evolutionary is a new big bad coming to Marvel Snap with the ability of, at the start of the game, you unlock the potential of your cards with no abilities. Now, cards with no abilities generally are, are just cards that are usually cards that are buffed with by Patriot. Now, if you're playing High Evolutionary, Patriot will not buff those cards. So you can't really play High Evolutionary and Patriot in the same deck to kind of double dip. You basically have to choose one or the other. But essentially, cards that are in the game as a base card that would get buffered Patriot are the ones being affected here. Now, rocks and things like that do not get new abilities. Like, let's say you're playing High Evolutionary and your opponent gives you a rock. That is not going to have some extra ability because of this card. Things like the the um, the dragons or any anything spawned from the locations will also not have special abilities. It's cards that you're deliberately playing into your deck with, that will get buffed by High Evolutionary. So I want to talk about the seven cards that are being adjusted and my thoughts on each of them individually. So let's we're going to be going. In increasing cost order, this is just general stuff. So let's get the first one. First one we're gonna talk about is Wasp. So this one is a zero cost one power card with the new on reveal effect two random enemy cards here with negative one power. Now, if you look at it base value, it's going to be a zero three because you're going to be afflicting two power negative so you add the two power to the one power base it's a zero three that's not a bad card at all a kind of very reminiscent to patriot right patriot would make this a zero three as well so obviously you have some synergies with on reveal that could do something but even worst case scenario with high evolutionary you add a zero three to your deck which is very nice generally the downside is that it has to afflict two random enemy cards in the same location so your opponent has to be running um boards that run lots of cards so you can hit them and it means that you can't really play as early because you're not going to get full value most of the time if you play as early as, or especially if you have priority so that's the downside here but still potential for it to be very good and there's definitely some synergies with afflicting enemies with negative one so Definitely think this will be a very played card, pretty much probably a staple in a lot of high evolutionary decks because there's not really too much of a downside of it. It's a zero three. There's a lot of cards that are like two cost, two energy, three power. So having a card that's zero energy, three power potential is pretty nice. So I definitely think this is one of the better ones that we're going to see and something I, I definitely see a lot of. Next up, we have Misty Knight. So this one is the wand energy two power base but now it has when you end a turn with unspent energy you give another friendly card plus one power so i'm assuming that if you play this and you end without energy it will buff another card on your board with plus one power don't think it's going to be targeting your hand or anything like that that would be interesting for sure but i'm assuming it's going to be like a reverse sunspot where if you have en unspent energy, you're going to be giving that to something random on the board. So you can't have this as your only card on the board, but I think that's not the hardest thing to do. So 
there is some potential in this. I do think it's kind of hard to really see where this really shines. It's still a one drop, which has that one drop weakness of being easily destroyable. And it's kind of hard to use these unspent energies unless your deck is fully synergized or um, around leaving one energy every turn, which you can definitely, I do think this will be playable in those type of decks. If you're playing a casual deck, it's kind of hard to leave unspent energy. You usually need to be playing your four on four, your five on five, your six on six. It, it, it's not really very powerful to use one man on turn two, two man on turn three, three man on turn four. That's not, the payoff isn't super clear to do that. So I think unless you're fully indexing on the unspent energy style, this is not going to be the most popular option for playing high evolutionary, but definitely we're going to see a lot of it at the beginning. But I think as the meta settles, this will be probably one of the le least used ones. So a bit unfortunate there. I just think its power isn't as potentially powerful, but uh, compared to some of the other options you have. Next one is Shocker. So Shocker's new ability is you is an honor reveal. You give the leftmost card in your hand minus one cost. So it's it's two energy, three power. But now you have this honor reveal to give you the leftmost card in your hand minus one cost. Now I think this is a fantastic ability. I think making things cheaper is so strong in the game being able to get a card out earlier than normal especially cards that are six cost or so is just a very very strong ability there are decks that really just benefit completely from doing that right you have those electro ramp decks you've seen it how consistent they can be and hitting something like a sarah early hitting something like dr doom early you get to play the odin and just hitting anything playable which obviously your deck should be um, based around having those cards playable i think is just going to be a very strong tool and you can kind of control it right if you have a lot of cheap cards you can play those out first so that you're hitting something you want so definitely think this has the potential to be very powerful i i don't wouldn't be surprised if this is one of the staples you always put in a high evolutionary build so um, I think this will be very strong, very good, and I'm definitely excited to play with this and, and interested to see the combos people come up with. Next up, we have Cyclops. So when you end a turn with unspent energy, you afflict two random enemies here with minus one power. So this is kind of similar to Misty Knight. Cyclops is a three power, four, uh, three energy, four power base. But now every time you end the turn on some energy, you're flicking two random energies cards here with minus one power. So it's the same ability as Wasp in terms of the extra power you're giving or removing from your opponents, except now you have to end the turn on some energy, meaning that if you want to utilize this the first turn, you, you're basically having to play this on turn four. So this is kind of part of the unspent energy end game and i do think if you are playing all of them this can definitely make a lot of sense so i think in those decks it's going to be utilized but in terms of flexibility i don't see this being a flexible piece in multiple decks now i'm not saying it's bad i think you just have to fully invest on this aspect of high evolutionaries gameplay where some of the other ones like uh, Shocker, for example, I think you play in, in a lot of different decks, not necessarily high evolutionary centric, where I do think you're going to have to be aware of making sure you're ending turns with unspent energy. Now, if you play this on turn four without any other uh, end turn unspent synergies, this becomes a four or six, right? Because you have to pass a turn and then you're getting the plus two power. Also, you have to make sure that you're playing in a location where um two enemies are there so because if you do if you only put in one in in a location where there's only one enemy then you're only going to get one proc right so it, it stops being a, a a plus or minus two powered into a minus one and i i definitely don't think you're going to have a lot of locations where 
there's going to be lots of two spaces for your opponent. So you, you're, you're probably going to be corralled in one particular location where you want to be hitting these minus two powers. So that, that kind of makes it a little bit predictable for your opponent, where your opponent's like, okay, they're playing a high evolutionary deck, and I have two cards here. That means there's very likely, if they're playing Cyclops, they're going to play their Cyclops in this location. So that, that kind of read that's going to be available for your opponents is going to make it a little bit easier for them to plan around your play style. And I think that kind of being forced to play in a location because they have cards there can be a little bit of a weakness in this particular game style. If this style ends up just being very strong in that you stack all the un unspent energies and it just feels oppressive, well then it might still work, but if it is a balanced game plan, which I think it will be, then you're kind of allowing your opponent to kind of control where you play. So that's that's really my issue with this. Now, I'm not saying it's bad, but I think in terms of flexibility, you're not going to be seeing Cyclops all too often. Now, next one, we have the thing. So a f this one is a four power, six base, which I actually think is pretty reasonable for... Um, a, a card in terms of the power, the cost to power ratio, Iron Lad kind of the same way. And I think like it's a little too strong, like too much power for such a good effect. But for the thing, now you have the on reveal, afflict a random enemy card here at minus one power. So you repeat this twice more. So you, you can hit, the main difference with this one is you can hit the same card multiple times. So you only need one card on the opponent's board, which is a lot easier to guarantee compared to having to guarantee two cards in a lane. So this means that this becomes a four nine, which is very strong, very good power. So I do think this is something you're going to see a lot in high evolutionary decks. It's just a four nine and combined with Zabu, I think four energy is just a pretty powerful price point to pay. And it's not a card that requires setup really in any meaningful way. You can just play it down in turn three. Some some of the other four cost cards require some type of setup where they either get like Shang-Chi or Enchantress or you want to play them a little bit later on in the game. So this one you can play turn three, you feel good about it. So I can definitely see this being a staple in high evolutionary decks. Now, next one, we have Abomination. Now, Another video I want to make is talking about Wave. And I do think this is the card that really ultimately decided that the Wave change. I think if Wave had its original ability, this plus Death plus She-Hulk, you know, would just be too oppressive. But now without that change, I do think this is probably in a fairer spot. I was definitely worried about High Evolutionary mostly because of this card. I thought this card was by far the strongest one uh, compared to all of the other ones and the, the potential of what this could do, especially with wave. With the wave changes, I'm a little bit less worried. I still think turn six abominations can be very, very powerful if you are built around it. So I do think this could be one of the bigger bombs for high evolutionary decks as long as they are playing correctly. Now the 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 caveat with this card in particular is that you need to have five different targets if you want it to be free now do you, does the card need to be free no probably not right like a one energy nine power card is still gonna do a ton of work right so even if it's not free i still think if you hit a couple targets and it's like two costs or something that's still going to be a ton of damage a ton of pressure to put on your opponent so i still think even without that downside this is going to be very powerful and there's definitely some synergies you can do even a, d apart from high evolutionary synergies. You just have to have cards afflicted with negative power, which cards like Hazmat can do extremely well. So as well as there are some locations that can also do that. So I do think this is a card that we'll see it play a lot and can be a very nice win conditions for a lot of high evolutionary decks. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is the one of the more stable 
cards that are being played auto include in most high evolutionary decks. Now, unfortunately, this one does have some counters to it, right? With Hazmat, obviously, there's Luke Cage, and Luke Cage counters a lot of the other high, uh, high evolutionary stuff. I do think you're going to see a lot more of Hazmat decks with this card coming out, but I do think in a lot of cases, this can be a very nice finisher, a very nice pressure point to play into your opponent. So definitely interested to see how people utilize this into their compositions and make new decks with the, the changes there. And then finally, finally, but not least, we have the Hulk. So Hulk is the six drop, the big boy, six power, 12, six energy, 12 power, ongoing plus two power for each turn you ended with unspent energy so i'm assuming right let's say you could somehow get this also down with unspent energy you could you could theoretically have this be like a 20 power bomb essentially and, and that could be the power you need necessarily to make the unspent energy strategy work out really well now so some some of the issues with unspent energy obviously is that you're not playing a ton of cards and that could really be a downside but if you are going to be playing this strategy i do think this is a pretty nice finisher as long as you're getting it around like 16 power i think if if it's 16 or more that's really pretty decent to do so you only have to not use energy in two turns which like turn one you could do pretty easily as well if you if you just don't have anything on the first turn right so it, it's not that hard to make it pretty big and if you are focusing on the unspent energy finale i do think this could be a nice finisher now the downside is it it is kind of telegraphed right if you are going to be doing that and i'm not sure how popular the unspent energy strategy will be it really just depends how oppressive it feels to your opponents but there are counterplays to this it is an ongoing it is shang chiable right and it you do it is your whole turn to play this so there is that downside but i do think that if you are doing the unspent energy it, it makes sense to end your games with this and with the way the unspent energy strategy works you're going to be getting a lot more procs on that final turn as well right like if if you can get that done you can you can get a lot of power down so my thoughts on this one is like it's good in the archetypes that will be using unspent energy i just don't think that will be the most common way people are going to play this i i, I think high evolutionary will probably be more of a include as a tech piece in that you want to be playing something like shocker you want to be playing something like wasp and you want to be playing something like the thing or abomination and you're just going to be using the high evolutionary as like just a supplemental to an already established game plan or a new game plan that arises because you have more pieces to use i don't really think you're going to be having let's put every single um high evolutionary card in the same deck and then run that and that's going to be super meta with some some small synergies i don't really think it's going to be that easy i think the best decks are still going to have some other tech pieces some other alternative strategy and then you supplement with high evolutionary so I'm thinking Wasp, I'm thinking Shocker, I'm thinking The Thing. Those three will be the the main pressure point. And then also Abomination will also be very powerful to be included. And then the non, the end turn ones will be the, the ones that are not bad, but have to be in their own separate strategy where you're really focusing on that with maybe a Sunspot or, or something like that to really take full advantage of the unspent energy now of course if they add more unspent energy synergies that could also swing the numbers but looking ahead of some of the new cards being added those could definitely change for sure but i haven't really seen anything that fully synergizes with 
keeping up with your unspent energy. So I just wanted to kind of talk about those. We're going to have uh, de like deck breakdowns and deck uh, um, thoughts for High Evolutionary. I do think there are definitely some cool ideas that people have already thought about, myself included, for High Evolutionary, which is going to be coming out real soon. But overall, I just wanted to kind of have a view of the seven cards and just talk about them individually, individually and how it it's likely to play out in the meta. So hope you guys enjoy this one. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Wow, that took 20 minutes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>